here at the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how I store my paints and brushes. This has been like probably the most requested tutorial for my um, January craft storage solution video series and I'm so excited to share with you because as you may notice I've rearranged over here. Today's video is brought to you by Opinion Outpost. They are a marketing research company that pays you for your opinion. So um, if you want to help companies and brands come up with new and better products and services please check out the link below and it will take you to opinion outpost they um, are a survey company you get paid for the surveys that you take you do have to be over 18 to take surveys but it's a great way to earn a little extra cash for some new paints and brushes don't you think well I always love extra cash for paints and brushes that's where my extra cash goes I don't know about you all right so what I have over here um, when I was doing my painting tutorial the other day I was working at an easel and I typically do watercolors so I sit at my big table but I really loved getting back to easel work so I have my easel here and right here I have an alt light and this is a um, one of the it's a full spectrum light you can find these at um, Joann's and AC Moore and any of the arts and crafts supply stores online um, and you can use coupons on these a lot of times and they do go on sale at the big craft stores so it's a good idea to kind of keep your eyes open for a while if you're considering getting one of those um, behind here I have my trash can and I'm glad that I could put that here because it used to be kind of outside of my room out of the way so this is really good um, because you can see that I could actually fit six of these carts right over here but I decided to have four and have the trash can there so that I would be able to just kind of toss dirty paper towels and stuff right in there conveniently all right I've had these carts for probably about 15 years and up here on the top I have three drawer carts and on the bottom I have six drawer carts that are more narrow and you can find pretty much any configuration you want of these carts they have them they have like the two big ones on the bottom and then two shallow ones on top which may be the best um, storage solution if you don't have a ton of stuff but you have a variety of sizes of things but I'm going to go and show you what I have in these drawers this top drawer here I have my bottles of liquid watercolor and I know you've seen me use these before you probably have if you've um, been watching my channel for a while because I make my own spray inks I refill my um, my paint pens I make my own like you know faux wink of Luna and faux wink of Stella's and all sorts of crafty concoctions and I use these because I find them to be a very affordable and richly saturated product and um, I've used them for different brands but I think I like the Blick uh, liquid watercolors the best and look how well they sit right in there and I can see exactly what I have that's the important thing you want to see exactly what you have um, here I have some sandpaper and uh, pipettes and gum tape and I've got some oil bars there which should be in my oil paint drawer except it's really full uh, which is right here this is actually pretty heavy but I've got all my tubes of traditional oil paints and mediums in here and this thing must weigh like 30 pounds it probably should be on the way bottom but it just didn't work the, the black shelves they have under there are a little bit lay, uh, a little bit wider so it didn't work that way here I have my tube acrylics and a few leftover spray acrylics that were from a t-shirt project that I did a couple years ago but the paint's still good so I just put it right in here because like with like you know keep all your like with like and it's so much easier to organize that way here I'm just gonna move my this, uh, tab right back here I have two acrylic paints and also some odds and ends like window caulking which I use to make my own um, texture paste and uh, the silicone spatula that I'm going to cut up to make a little texture paste uh, spreader and you know paint syringes and paint combs and all sorts of these are cool this is from the hardware store they're you know you can use them for paste paper or just making textures in your paintings it's kind of neat um, now under that I have my uh, mediums and it's been super requested so it's like on my to-do list like the top of my to-do list is to make a video on different ways to use acrylic mediums so I've got all my mediums in there and these are really cool because I used to teach art full-time mostly to kids and so I have all these mask forms that are so fun because you just make you use paper mache or plaster and you can make as many masks as you want with these you know plastic forms and I think those are from Blick I got them a long time ago but I think they still have them um but I've got lots of golden and liquitex mediums in there that I cannot wait to do a video for you with I'm getting over a little sore throat and a cold so I have this like a little raspy and my voice is a little tired but I will try to persevere and get through all this painty storage goodness all right before we go into the um into the black containers i'm going to show you this now i, I had this uh i had an acrylic rack on top of this tabaret you probably can you see that yeah you can see the top of it we'll we'll tip down i'll tip down right now actually and show you that um and that is my iris cart that my friend kathy got me for my birthday one year 
and um, that's where I keep a lot of scrapbooking embellishments. But the neat thing about this is that it's on wheels. I took the, the wheels off of the carts over here so I could stack them, but this is wheels. So I can wheel it under my bench where my camera is sitting um, and get it out of the way, or I can wheel it over here and I can put my, my uh, jars of paintbrushes on here. Now this is a cool vase that, um, well, it was really cool until I stuck it in the dishwasher and all the color washed off of it. So then I decided it would make a great um, storage solution for my short handled oil painting brushes. So that's what I have in here. Um, here I have some acrylic brushes that are long handled. I have a big mishmash of brushes. I used to teach, so I have lots of extras. Now in, uh, and so if I was going to do acrylic painting, I'd have all my brushes, my acrylic brushes and my palette right here. I would just switch it out depending on what I'm using. Now, as you can see, I can, if I don't have the brushes there, because they normally live on shelves in my studio, I'll just roll this right out of the way, right underneath my bench. And there, it's not in the way where you're going to trip over it. Now over here, I've got these, uh, these drawers and they're so convenient. I really like the shallow size. You can get these any department store. I think that um, I might have got these at Staples. I think they're generally around $25 or $30, but they go on sale for 50% off all the time. So really you can wait for a bargain. And some of them, actually I think both of these come out pretty easily. Um, so here I have my gouache paint. And as you know, I use this mostly for re-inking my pigment ink pads. And I do have a tutorial on how to make your own ink with gouache paint. It works fantastic. And, and, and don't be alarmed by the tippiness of this, I assure you, it's fine. Here I have my metallic watercolors. And something, a uh, little fun fact, I was, uh, <laughs> I was looking through all this yesterday and I found one of these in another drawer and I went, oh, that should be with my metallic watercolors. And lo and behold, I had another spare pair of this and I have a set of these paints over where I actually keep my uh, palettes I'm currently using. So that was fun. These are just some like dollar store shimmery watercolors that work pretty well. And then I've got my homemade twinkling H2Os and also some of the real twinkling H2Os, which are also really fun to use. And then I've just got this plastic palette and these are really handy. So if you're using watercolor crayons or any other water soluble media, you can like sharpen them into these palettes. And um, especially if it's like, if it's like an all lead watercolor pencil or crayon, you can come back and use the lead as paint. So you don't waste anything. So I really love that. So just a few of these are super handy to have. I think my dog's gonna come over here in a minute. I see her across the room. She's gonna probably come over here and lay right in the middle of everything. Here is my um, watercolor tube drawer, and this is great because when my um, palette goes empty, because I buy, I, I get both the uh, pans of color and the tubes of color and empty palettes. So if I get an empty spot, I just go and refill it with the correct color or a color that I prefer, and I'm good to go. So that's where I keep all my watercolor paint tubes. As you can see, you don't go through them that quickly that way, and it's great because it's very efficient and um, economical. All right. Oh, this is my template drawer. Not really painting, but that's where I keep all my templates. Let me just see if there's any of these other drawers are actually painting. Soldering. Oh yeah, I got extra brushes here. These are extra long handed brushes. The thing about the drawers on this side is that they don't remove. So I don't put things in these drawers that I would want to like, I could actually take this whole thing right over my table and do some work. I can't do that with these. So that's something to consider when you're buying them. Check in the store and see if you can take the drawers out. If you can't, see if you can find the the one the ones that you can because they are so much more useful. And I got like, oh my gosh, because I actually have three of them in here. You know when you get those pink tubes and you can't open them and you're like tempted to use your teeth but never use your teeth because that is awful. These are like those little um, paint grippers and I found these on sale at Martin's for like 50 cents. So I grabbed a bunch of these so that I'd always have a, a paint uh, paint opener thingy, paint cap opener. Of course, if I keep them all in the same drawer and I can't remember where I put them, it's probably not that helpful, but there they are. Look, visual proof. And I have a turkey basters in case I feel like doing some Jackson Pollock, I guess. Or if I need to decant like gesso into like a smaller container from my big gallon of gesso. And I've got some, you know, other long handled brushes, mostly left over from the classes I used to teach. I don't tend to get into here very much, but, um, but as you can see, I keep oil paint brushes separate from acrylic paint brushes from watercolor brushes because your brushes will last longer if you keep them specific to one medium. So if you like, say if you love a set of brush brushes and you want to use them for all mediums, if you can afford it, you're better off to buy a set for each medium. So that way they'll last a lot longer and there'll be less wear and tear on the brushes. So you know, going from oil to water is not the best. And I think that's it for painting supplies. All this other stuff is kind of just random um, craft supplies. 
uh, but they're, everything's right here within reach. I can get to it easily. This is another really good idea for your brushes. This is a silverware container. It's just like a picnic silverware container where you'd have an open side. Like here is an open side that you would put napkins and this is divided for like utensils. But I just stuck a few um, toilet paper rolls in here and it's great for separating my paintbrushes and it just works really, really well. Another really handy brush box that I have, it's actually a bucket, is this divided bucket here. It's, um, I'm not sure who made it, but you can get it from pretty much any art supplier and it has these two individual buckets inside, which are great for actually having two con containers of water when you paint. And it's got this big bucket here. I'm gonna just have my brushes in there for now because it works. These are all watercolor brushes. And one other brush box I wanna show you. This was made, um, this was made for me. The only thing I think I might change is I might put dividers in the center because otherwise everything just kind of falls over. I made this little stained glass box and I have some brushes in there. Um, but I tend not to reach in here for this, I think because it's closed. And personally for me, if I don't see it, I don't use it. So out of sight, out of mind, I need to see my stuff in order to use it. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about how to store your, store your supplies or other videos that you'd like to see in this art storage video series, please leave the links below and also check out Opinion Outpost in the video description if you are interested in taking some surveys and earning some cash. They are a, a reputable survey company if you're looking to make a little money from home and uh, share your thoughts on upcoming products. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting!